Uh, I think it is uh, a, f a very unfair accusation uh, that we are impeaching somebody whilst in hospital. Uh, it has been said here, Honorable Speaker, that nobody can predict uh, when you can be taken ill. Uh, it can happen to any one of us. And therefore, we did not plan that uh, the Deputy President would not be here uh, to, to also be able to present his case. And uh, as Senator Roba has said, uh, many people were in fact waiting to also get some clarifications from some of the pronouncements that have come from uh, uh, the Deputy President. Honorable Speaker, I want to also thank the parties that have taken time to appear before us, the case by the National Assembly, and of course the very able representation of the Deputy President. Honorable Speaker, it is clear that the case by the National Assembly is not perfect. Uh, but I have agonized over some of the issues that have been raised by the National Assembly, and Honorable Speaker, allow me to begin with ground one, where the president, Deputy President is accused of violation of Articles 27.4, uh, which, uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, makes it unconstitutional for you to discriminate, on among uh, other grounds, Honorable Speaker, on the grounds of belief. Secondly, Honorable Speaker, there is also uh, an express provision under section Art Article uh, 73 on the same and Article 33 3D that specifically deals with speech, Honorable Speaker, that constitutes advocacy for hatred on the basis of discrimination. Honorable Speaker, yesterday when I put this question to the legal team uh, of the Deputy President, I was expecting a proper explanation, but of course, uh, you also saw that they, they chose to throw Senator slide remarks. Senator and Senator Tabitha. Please pause my well, time. Senator Tabitha, you're speaking. Pause the my senators time. Senators give you a pin drop silence. The same must be extended to the Senator for Nairobi City. Sit down, Senator Mofire. Proceed. So, Honorable Chair, Honorable Speaker, Yesterday, when I put this question, uh, seeking clarification to the defense uh, team, they chose instead to make snide remarks about appointments that have been made recently uh, of members of my party, ODM. Honorable Speaker, I have agonized uh, about some of the things that the Deputy President has said. In fact, in my entire time as an elected leader, I've met the Deputy President only once, and this is the second occasion when he was in the House. And both of them, honestly, were very sad events. The first one was a funeral, and these proceedings can also be likened to uh, a political death uh, if the House decides to impeach him. But Honorable Speaker, on that occasion, I did tell him, to his face, my position on some of the utterances that have come from him, that in fact, I strongly objected to those uh, pronouncements. Uh, his legal team sought to hide behind these coalition agreements. I have agonized over what to do with an agreement, Honorable Speaker, that outs the mandate of constitutional bodies. For instance, Honorable Speaker, you are told that uh, in the agreement, positions that especially are uh, essentially are supposed to be available to all Kenyans uh, through advertisement by the Public Service Commission, like uh, permanent secretaries, have already been dished out. So what am I supposed to do with a contract, a contract that ousts the uh, mandate of the PSC, a constitutional body. What am I supposed to do with a contract that ousts the mandate of this uh, House Honorable Speaker, for instance, to vote for the person who sits in the chair that you sit in? And if memory serves me right, Honorable Speaker, members who are not signatories to the coalition agreement of Kenya Kwanzaa, in fact, participated in voting for you to become the Speaker. And many of them were members of my political party, ODM, although, of course, I was not one of them. Honorable Speaker, there is a position in law about what to do with illegal and unconscionable contracts. I feel that the Deputy President wasted an opportunity to give clarification on his pronouncements that Honorable Speaker, he chooses to hide behind a contract that I consider unconstitutional is something that I have agonized over. Honorable Speaker, one of the questions that was posed to him is what, uh, I remember a discussion about which is the uh, the, what are the strongholds of ANC and, OD, uh, and, and, and Ford Kenya? And somebody t said that it is Western Kenya. Honorable Speaker, as SG of ODM, I know for a fact that Busia County is an ODM county. In fact, if you look at the statistics at the Register of Political Parties, the county with the highest membership in ODM is not Homer Bay or, or, or Siaya. It is actually Busia County. So the question I'm being asked by my members from Busia 
is honorable speaker if a member of ODM who resides in Busia wanted to be a permanent secretary does he take his application to the local for the Kenya office so that he can access the 30 percent for Western Kenya and that is the agony honorable speaker that people are going through honorable speaker there was also the conversation around uh, the public attacks on a judge as a lawyer as an advocate of the high court sworn to defend the constitution I agonize over what I'm supposed to do with public attacks on judicial officers, Honorable Speaker, people that I appear before uh, seeking justice for my clients. Honorable Speaker, we have a discussion around also attacks on intelligence uh, uh, institutions in our country and the Director General of the Intelligence. Honorable Speaker, it was argued here that in fact, as a member of the National in uh, Security Council, Security Council, the Deputy Speaker has a forum, the Deputy President has a forum to bring up Senator Karen Nyamu. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I can assure you, Mr. Speaker, none of us is enjoying these proceedings of an impeachment motion.